Welcome to this edition of WPNN. I'm Ethan Getz. From the likes of former NFL player, the late Wilbur Young, to 2012 New York Jets recruit Damon Harrison and Iowa House of Representative Rob Taylor, Penn has boasted a number of acclaimed graduates who have set the world on fire. But few have had the accomplishments of another Penn alum that you may not have heard of, and that's Miriam Kamadi Warrie. WPNN's Esther Luwakabama has resurfaced information on this largely unknown alum. Tucked away in William Penn's Wilcox Library is a sculpture of former student Miriam Kamadi. A simple Google search of her will redirect you to Miriam K. Warrie, the Chancellor of Moore University in Kenya. The same search reveals numerous honors as well. Some include the Queen Elizabeth II Gold Medal for Outstanding Contributions to International Public Health, a medal from the Italian cabinet, and being named by Forbes magazine as one of the women changing the world in the medical field. Before the honors, the journey started here in Oskaloosa during the fall of 1961. At a time where few Africans studied abroad, where it took the rare opportunity and pursued her education at Penn College. Even more rare was Wera's educational choices. Wera selected natural sciences during a time where women, minorities, or foreigners were discouraged to do so. I just used to pray to God that God helps me. I don't know what to do. Other challenges she faced were culture shock and racial tension. And uh, those were the two other black people, but they were not from Africa. I was the first African. And although these racial issues were not very strong in Iowa, there were sometimes reflected in the colleges, but in the student body. However, Wera upheld her Christian values in adversity and felt support from her community, members of Penn's administration, and the college president, Arthur S. Watson. So I knew that, and that God was always with you. So I knew that God was always with me, and I was made in the image of God. So that always made me very, very encouraged. Mira Rari graduated in 1964, the same year the Civil Rights Act passed, which ended segregation and discrimination based on race, religion, and gender. Current William Penn president, John Otterson, echoed that Penn's Quaker heritage allowed for Mira Rari to have an educational foundation, an anomaly then. Well, I think it tells the story. She is a modern example of what Penn has tried to do throughout its history, and that's to impact lives and, and to uh, instill in our graduates that success is measured by what you do to make your community better. Also, Wilcox head librarian, Judy Hansen, added that where is devotion to tackling issues related to health care, such as the AIDS epidemic in Africa, is an example of servitude at its prime. It's just pretty remarkable that a person would um, look at a problem like the AIDS crisis and then try to solve it. To me, it's just so telling that she, when, when she was here at Penn, a lot of students would choose a path of service, and she certainly did, and that she not only thinks, oh, there's nothing I can do about it, it's a problem, it's out of control, there's nothing that can be done, but she looks at a problem like that and tries to solve it. Miriam Wera's acclaimed international career spans more than three decades. Wera now, the Chancellor of Moore University in Kenya, uses the lessons she learned years ago at Penn to help her today. Recently, the Chancellor and Education System in Kenya now faces a country in dismay. In early April, Garissa University was attacked by Al-Shabaab, an extremist Islamic group. 147 students were killed. The Chancellor is trying to dissolve the tension in Kenya by promoting dialogue during these troubled times. Also, to, 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 we are also encouraging our students to realize that life in this world is, is, is a bit dice in the... And that, that is not the end of everything. Clearly, Chancellor Wery still remembers the promise she made to her younger self about helping her village and others. One could say the world has become her oyster and her village. For WPNN, I'm Esther Luakabamba. For an extended interview with Chancellor Miriam Wery on her life, obstacles, and successes, please visit WPU Students Media, the Statesman Status, .wordpress.com and click the Legacy article. Today is the last day of finals on campus, and today also marks Mike Moyer's last day as a professor at William Penn University. It has been nearly 20 years since he became a part of the William Penn family. 
Moyer started off his career here at Penn as a religion counselor, but gradually made his way to being a professor. Moyer's dream has always been to become a teacher or a professor, and he was glad that he was given, finally given an opportunity to accomplish that goal at William Penn University. Moyer said he is sad to leave the campus, but he leaves knowing that he has touched the lives of many people who have come and gone from William Penn University. The school year is drawing to a close, and so is Professor Mike Moyer's time at William Penn University. Ten years have passed since Professor Moyer started teaching religion here. A lot has changed over the decade Moyer has been at Penn, including students' attitudes towards religion. I want students to, to see the fact that religion, and not only just personally, but culturally and socially, it matters. It makes a lot of difference. Religion and faith are two subjects Moyer is passionate about, which is why Moyer teaches over five different religion classes throughout the year. Moyer's goal in all of his classes is to get the students to care about the material. Moyer is faced with the struggle of relating his material to students who every year come into class having little to no faith life. It's a challenge, and I, I do like challenges, and it's a constant challenge almost every day, it seems to me, uh, to create, you know, teach material that's, uh, that's, and try to show the relevance of, of it. Moyer has logged and continues to log countless hours into perfecting his work. Moyer said that he will never be quite finished working on his material because there will always be new information to discover. The hard work and dedication Moyer puts into his work will be difficult to replace. Mike is really, Professor uh, Moyer is really diligent. He's very thoughtful and he prepares a lot and he cares about the quality of his work. In that sense, we'll be seeking someone who also cares and who works very hard. Um, it's a marvelous thing to have a professor who cares that deeply and works so carefully to be professional. Moyer has developed a bond with the staff and student body here at Penn. The students will be sad to see Moyer go because Moyer is a professor they feel they can approach if they're having a problem with their classes or their personal lives. We might get someone that can replace the teaching ability, but the, the personal ability, the part where you can talk to him after class, he, where he, he will be very understanding if you're going through a hard time, that, that's gonna be hard to kind of replace. Moyer has been a part of Penn for nearly 20 years. It's a bittersweet time for Moyer as this chapter in his life comes to an end, but Moyer is ready to begin a new journey it's been a joy, really. Um, I, I don't, can't think of anything else I'd rather do than to have been here and have uh, associated with all the different uh, people, uh, so many wonderful people over the years. Uh, some have come and gone. Some have uh, even passed away that, uh, uh, that, uh, that were here. Professor Moyer has been looking forward to his retirement. Moyer said that he has numerous projects backed up around the house and hopes to begin work on them. For WPNN, I'm Titus Letzring. Moyer is hoping to still be a part of Penn in some way in the future as long as him and his wife don't move. Seniors at the end of the road right before graduation and they are worried about getting that key job and good pay, William Penn gives students opportunities to do this through leadership classes. Leadership coaches build teams so that they are more effective at achieving their visions. It is also said to be the number one feature bosses look for when hiring new employees. WPNN's reporter Shane Moore tells us how students get these opportunities at Penn. Leadership is important in the working world. It develops character, honesty, and a work ethic peers look up to. William Penn University offers many leadership opportunities to get youth leaders on track before graduating here. Student-led clubs and organizations are example of these leadership opportunities. Young adults at WP get leadership experience by running for positions within a group, becoming a student ambassador, or volunteering. Penn student-led radio station 88.7 KIGC is one of those opportunities besides music and talk shows created by students. The station encourages community involvement. Recently, the radio station and the Mahassa County United Way teamed up for an event called Chalk the Walk. 
It's a family-friendly event that raises money for the community outreach effort called Operation Backpack. KIGC's general manager, Kurt Sodak, headed up this year's colorful event and says opportunities such as this one are preparing him for the next level. The university has given me so many roles to be a leader. And uh, one of the things that I was told by uh, my advisor of the radio station and my professor Wagner was, I always say, uh, it's like, you know, as, as stressful situation as me as a manager, being a leader. And he said, it's a blessing, it's an opportunity. WP's Student Government Association is another way students gain leadership. Students run for offices and are elected by their peers. SGA has a hand in many activities on campus, most recently organizing fundraisers for Penstock. SGA's president, Carly Smalls, has filled a role for two years and excited to take on the helm this fall. I really wanted to make an impact on what SGA does, um, and I feel like I really wasn't doing much of, or having much of an impact my first two years. So I really wanted to jump into the leadership role of president and make sure that uh, everything, uh, that I was able to do everything to the best of my ability to make sure that SGA can be the best that it can be. A leadership is big when creating social interactions at Penn. But another layer of leadership comes in the way of athletics. More than half of Penn's student body is involved in sports. That's where Penn's Athletic Advisory Committee comes into play. Each team picks two peers to be their voice on the committee. William Penn's athletic director, Greg Hafner, oversees the group. Hafner says the students that become leaders earlier in life have a smoother transition into the workforce. When kids transition out of university life and get into the real world, um, they're going to need those kinds of experience, experiences to, to better themselves, to advance in their positions, and just to make themselves better people. Through these different groups and opportunities, Penn students expect to have a better chance at taking the world on. For WPNN, I'm Shane Moore. For more information on how to get involved in leadership roles on Penn's campus, contact Levi Tarbell at 641-673-1024. Having your name in the record books is something that every athlete lives for. Even more than that, having your name be etched in the Athletic Hall of Fame walls. WPNN caught up with a few Hall of Famers to talk about what achieving this award means to someone who's put in all the hard work to get to that point. From the turf, to the diamond, to the pitch, and the hardwood, William Penn athletes strive on the playing grounds to achieve total perfection in their sport, but only a few will be honored with the title of Hall of Famer. Penn's tradition of the Hall of Fame dates back all the way to the very first inductee class of 1985. Emory Stewart, inductee class of 1996 for the sport of baseball and football, talks a little about what this opportunity means and how he accomplished such a prestigious feat. It's kind of an unusual feeling in that I wasn't sure I was worthy. Uh, I played with some outstanding players and uh, some great people, and uh, whenever you get a call like that, you're kind of like, oh, geez, what did I do to get in? But uh, and it was nice and uh, very much appreciated. I guess the word I would use to describe it would be humbled. Um, to me, you don't get into a Hall of Fame, and I'm in other, like the Football Coaches Association's Hall of Fame, thing like that, but those are results of other people. Um, when you're a coach, it's a result of the kids that you worked with, and then as a player, uh, to me, it was a culmination of all the, the teammates that I had and the coaches that, that helped me along the way. We didn't play 50, 60 games like they do now. We had 25, maybe. Uh, but at that time, I led in RBIs and uh, triples and things of that nature. So uh, it was a combination of those two sports that got me in. And I think a little bit of it might have been uh, some of the accomplishments I had after I graduated from William Penn, uh, winning state titles in both football and baseball. But football, we were outstanding. I got to play with uh, guys like Wilbur Young, Bruce Poland, uh, Greg Lang and them, and we won the league, won the Boot Hill Bowl Championship. Uh, just had a lot of 
a lot of wonderful time. Another local athletic Hall of Famer around the Penn area is Greg Hafner. Greg is the current athletic director here at Penn and was working at Penn under that job description while he was inducted into the class of 2007. I felt the same way most people feel when you get recognized in that way. I, I, it's an honor, number one. And, you know, when you think of the thousands of kids that have gone through here as athletes and, and you're being selected as one of the best out of that group, it, it is a great honor and, and um, a great achievement. Um, it was a really good team. We had a lot of good talent that year, and um, I, I did happen to be a captain of that team, so it was it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, anytime you you win that many ball games and and you have success, you know, you win the conference. And at the time, we were in the Iowa Conference, which uh, now is a Division Three conference, but um, back then it was an NAIA conference and. So it was, it was great, and I think um, one of the things, our claim to fame was that we beat Central College four years in a row, so we have to throw that in there anytime we get a chance. For WPNN, I'm Tyler Hafner. The 2015 Class of Hall of Fame will be chosen this summer and announced during the 2015 homecoming football game. And that does it for today, May 8, 2015. This will be our last newscast of the year, but we Hope to have you tune in next year as we kick off another year of news. Have a good weekend and a summer, everyone.